I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and all, all the wrong ways do you, they look like it's wrong initially or it's hard or you hate it or someone made a mistake or people are getting in your way with whatever um, or like last year not letting you tell your story or pushing you back down. My journey within music has completely coloured what my music is. You've heard writers say, it just fell down from the sky and it came out of me. And I've had those experiences, but with story, I really, God, I, I really finely tuned it all the way through every single second. I've been very um, overly precious with making this what I think has the secret sauce. a.m. Oh, here we go. This is exciting. It's called Story of My Life. It's our Eurovision 2020 entry by Leslie Roy. Here it is for the first time on radio. You know what, what is the story of my life? Everyone has that. So I think across the board for the Eurovision as a song contest, that's why, again, this really works. Everybody told me that I'd never be someone plot line behind the story of my life. Aside from it being the story of my life, I didn't know what to do with it. And that was almost similar to your vision growing up watching it like a lot of people my age in Ireland. It was such a massive thing in my house growing up. I grew up in a musical, the Maus and Bands all my childhood. So the Eurovision was massive. Um, massive, massive. I still have parties now as an adult for the Eurovision. So I kind of always had a little bit of a thought in, in my mind that, you know what, I would love to maybe try and do the Eurovision. what's hitting home so much so far behind the scenes with this lyric but everybody connects to it because we all have a story it doesn't matter who we are I got the phone call, 
think, yeah, March 18th. Uh, but it had already gone out online, so I'd got 100 messages before I got the phone call saying it was cancelled. Even though we were perfect, babe, fixing photographs from the wall that I smashed. Again, I didn't really know what to do. Was I safer to stay here? Was it safer to go back in Ireland? People were calling me saying, you won't be let back in. My wife Lauren had already gone home a week before me, back to New York. So I flew back, I think, a couple of days after the cancellation. I know you and I are over. I know I broke us open. Sorry can't change anything I've done. Just let me fix the pieces. Let me stop the bleeding. I know your heart is broken, broken. So let me fill it up with gold. Back to the sirens. Back in the hood. House in a house where we belong. Now you're back in New York, babe. I'm in LA drinking the pain. I go back, I go back to all I know. To the night when we met in Tokyo. When you said we'd never change, even though beauty always breaks. Fixing. I created something that not many people in the world can create and do. I got a massive record deal out of Bob Regan. And like I came and worked with the biggest producer in the world here. And I wrote a huge album that did go top 40 in America. And like I've been able to take those lessons about songs and how to connect with people and use it for the past 14 years. Sorry, can't change it. That experience like changed my life and put me on a path that I never would have thought I'd ever be on so it was amazing and it was heartbreaking and it was amazing again and I'm sure it'll continue to be different things as I change you know as a woman and as an artist I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I was searching for all these things and at the end of the day as it always is but we forget when I kind of went back home to what my natural sound is and my natural style of music maps popped out and it all kind of fell into place so the song is a metaphor it's internally an inward look about coming back to myself and writing that song but it's also a little bit of coming back home here this whole past year and reconnecting with my roots here and trying to understand what that is musically and personally um, in, in this whole grand scheme. Nine,
really see what's going to happen on stage. I can finally feel how this is going to, how I'm going to sing it, how all the pieces that I've had in my head for the past, even before starting my life, has kind of come together and it feels, it's, it is that, it's the calm before the storm feeling. It feels very at ease and it feels very natural and it's all flowing really well. And I think that's, again, it's just a kind of a testament to the work that I've kind of put into getting to this place. Now it's just flowing. It's not really feeling like that rock up the hill at the minute. It's feeling like, all right, we actually have this ready to go. I've, I've, I've got this. I'm gonna let down the armor with power. So there's a real sense of, um, I don't want to say like false confidence or anything like that. There's just a sense of ease. The song feels good. The performance feels really good, and. Yeah, I, I'm just very, very locked into these three minutes and feeling great about it. Thought I was done, but I got it wrong. I found twice, I'm twice as strong. Fire, the sun, places. Yeah, looking back on the year and looking at it from here, I, I think these past few weeks I got like a little bit emotional about it because. I think the work and the kind of the sadness that you feel and the shock of what has happened to so many people, I think I finally just kind of let myself process it. There was a sense of relief to being home and experiencing it and just calm, I think. I don't know if that even makes sense to anybody, but basically committed now to being back here in Balbriggan in Ireland. And me, my wife and the family kind of made the decision that it was also a good call that we've taken in my grandmother. Um, and that's been great and lovely. Um, and also, as a, now I'm like a full-time carer, so it's all, it's very new too. But it's really, really rooted in my life here again, and also so invested in making this song make sense for everybody. This is Incredible, the amazing Miss Leslie Roy. I don't care. Thanks.